there it is it arrived the nesco smart canner pressure canner not cooker canner canner i'm making a quick review on this because i wish i had known what i know now that i used it a couple times i really 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 wanted to love this but it's going to end up being a mixed review about it First to the reason why I wanted the electric pressure canner. I am set up with this big All-American and I love it. It's a powerhouse. It works out almost weekly. It takes um, 14 quarts and a whole bunch of pints, half pints, but it's huge. And if I only want to can up, let's say some leftovers, then something smaller would have been okay. I have the Instant Pot. We talk about some features compared but this is not a canner, this is only a cooker. So I thought, what a wonderful thing. <laughs> we get this um, electric plug-in thing. It's probably a little bit more hands-off and I can put in some leftovers and we're good to go. Also, I'm in the hot and humid Southeast and when you cook with the big one, it gets hot in the kitchen. This is a lot of surface area that reflects the heat. When I cook with my instant pot pressure cooker or even slow cook it stays fairly cool on the outside and i don't heat up the kitchen that's why i absolutely love these and so my thinking was it's going to be the same with this it saves me a lot of electricity running the air conditioner it keeps my kitchen cooler well we'll talk about this that was a little bit of a flop on that let's start off with the simplicity of opening a lid Turn it counterclockwise, it opens. Turn it right, tidy, it tightens. On this one, counterclockwise, it opens. Turn it clockwise, it tightens. On this one, turn it counterclockwise, it locks. Turn it righty tighty, it opens. That's only what the first beef I have with this lid. So it comes with your instruction manual, which, well, it's kind of weird too. It comes with the weights. You have two trivets in there. This is the canner insert. This goes on the bottom. And this one, if you have a double row of jars, you can divide the jars with this. No, these are okay. Now let's talk jars. All throughout this manual booklet thing, it says to Use white mouth, or five pounds white mouth, or six, four ounce jelly jars. I suppose they don't have to be white mouth. And then here again that, please use white mouth for best results. Quart size jars cannot be used with the water bath function. We know that. Um, I don't understand why the white mouth has better results than a regular mouth. They do just the same when I use my All-American. And I know people use Presto canners and whatever, and it makes no difference. In fact, I like the regular mouth much better. I am set up for regular mouth lids. I use Tadler lids on all my jars, and they're regular mouth. I don't want to switch to white mouth. So this made no sense to me. I see no big scientific reason. The only reason I can think of why this would be white mouth is because the regular mouth are taller. And so when, let's say, it is here, remember that lid awkwardly closes over there. So when it comes in here, you may have the vent right there sitting on top of that lid and maybe it doesn't work well. Well, people, you could have made this a quarter inch taller, the whole contraption. And people would have been able to use their regular mouth chars. I don't understand. Because this is really... It's almost flush. So, since they recommend only these, you can use those. But, you may lose your stuff if it doesn't can it correctly. You know, a busted char or something, that's one thing. But if you do four chars of meat, that's a lot of money and time invested. I hate that. So it's really, really unfortunate. It only does, it's only approved for the white mouth. And I know your rebel canners are out there, but oh boy, it, it, it makes my heart bleed when I 
have a chart that doesn't seal correctly because it was a rebel action, you know? I, I want to put them on the shelf and I want to use them and not worry about it. So this is unfortunate. Now to the cable. This is actually a fairly short cable. And this comes in important because you will see later on when I run this, you need to keep this good distance away from your cabinets or you ruin your cabinets. Now the Instant Pot has the same length cable pretty much. Here we go. Um, but, and what I like about the Instant Pot, it's a disconnect. So when I store this, I can just ball up the cable and put it inside. On this one, it's a hard wire and you have to just deal with your cable flip-flopping around when you don't use it because it's not like you can put it in here and then really close the lid, you have it on the cable. Not ideal. And then like the Instant Pot, it has the brown and the slow cook um, option. And I really thought this is cool because it is a lot bigger than my little Instant Pot. So if I have a deer shoulder, I don't have to bone it out that much. I just can fit it in because it's bigger. But, and here's the other thing, it's this pot, people. It has this, oh, I don't know, golden liner on the inside. It says non-stick, that's all you know about it. Um, of course, the Instant Pot has this stainless liner and I love cooking in stainless. I don't cook in any non-stick or aluminum, especially if, if it comes from China, because I have no idea what this liner is. And, you know, boiling some water or cracking an egg in it is one thing, but pressure cooking my food in a liner that I don't know. But that's just me. I'm a little bit weird about these things. So for me, cooking the food directly in this pot is out of question. And then we'll talk about this display. That's another, I don't know who invented that thing. Um, the other thing is this is kind of flimsy. It's when you press on it, I don't know, can you see the gif? I can press here all over all day long. There is nothing that gives. So it's clearly, it's clearly cheaper <laughs> than um, that one, but this said, in all, you know, in all fairness, this is not an expensive appliance. I think I paid a little over hundred dollars for it. So for the stuff it can do, supposedly, it's a pretty good price. Now, aside from water bath steam canning and the manual says to use the high for pressure canning. So there is no pressure can button. You basically press the high button and then set your time. I haven't quite figured out yet what the low button is for because there is no distinction between pressure cooking high or low. Like I have the option here with the instant pot. I can low pressure or high pressure my food, but I don't think this works here because in the manual you just set close the lid, put it airtight, and then set start to process for pressure cooking. They don't say you can press high or low. And the only mention for that low button I found was in the manual for water bathing. And it says there, if your chars are too tall, you should use the low pressure setting. This allows the use of much less water and gives you more flexibility because you cannot water bathe um, core chars in there. The water won't go above the char. So it says here to use the low setting for water bathing small, bigger chars, but it doesn't tell you how much water to put in. It just says it allows for much less water. That's quite ambiguous. Now let's talk about this lid because this seriously aggravates me. There is this weird thing in here, and I'll show you up closer in a second. So first of all, the righty tighty, forget about it. So you, to the left, it blocks, and then it's off this rail. And then you open the lid like this. The rail holds it in place. That's another thing later on, the water mess you get from this. And then in order to get the lid off so you can clean it, you have to hold it up, according to the manual, about four inches from from the top and then slide it out and see here we go <laughs> it aggravated again it's just oh 
it doesn't really slide it's look you gotta feed this in here and this is really cumbersome i don't know why this would have to be i have two hands here the thing is on the tripod and it's still oh and the other thing is because you have to fight this thing so much I don't this looks like it's just plastic it moves how I don't even know why it's necessary I rather have a lid that just comes off I don't need a lid to stand up give me a lid I can handle it but this one is really oh and then the other thing you know we all know don't open your lid towards you oh it's a lot of steam because it's a pressure cooker but there is no other way you're gonna have to stand in the back or on the side lift it up really quickly so it can't come out this is the only way you can open the lid and then the weight you have to in the beginning put it on exhaust this is like venting like any other pressure canner um but then after exhaust it has another notch and then another notch they are for nothing it's just that this thing moves really freely if you're not really really careful you could have accidentally have it on the wrong setting and also it moves to the left and right i found this a little bit overkill it makes it even more likely that perhaps you know you notch it a little bit and then something happens to it so you're supposed to start this out with eight cups of water eight cups that's two quarts that's a lot of water for this size in my opinion my um big one the all-american two inches from the bottom is maybe three quarts um then i appreciate the many notches they have in there it's for i don't even know on the left side <laughs> this is kind of mysterious it's four fifth full on the top uh, and then the right side is cups but if you don't have the best lighting you will still need to use a measure size because how do you know where it is it's really hard hard telling also if you do one round and then you have let's say another two quart jars after you just did three or four pints and you want to just top it off because you know the water doesn't get too bad too ugly you need the flashlight or you need to ditch all of it out because it's really hard to see in there I think what would have made more sense if they would have have this little measurement if people like that and just have a notch somewhere, just one notch, that's the eight cups of water. That would have been easier. So off we go. Four cups. Which is weird because there's a four cup marking right there. And the four cups from my jar just now. Do not reach the marking. Odd, right? Another one. It's not even six cups, and yet the eight cup mark is right there. This makes no sense. Okay, I don't have anything I need to can right now, so I'm using three quarts regular mouth because I don't have the white mouth tattlers and I don't want to waste some real good lids for this now. Well, you will use this. That is a reasonable thing I would can as leftovers. It says to start with hot water. I didn't because I'm just pretending to do a, a raw pack. <laughs> Um, but you wouldn't have to have hot water. You could hit the brown button until it heats up inside and the water is warm, I suspect. So these are in. They seem fairly good. What you're going to do is close the lid. Remember, left it tidy. And then we'll pick high pressure and let's do the time for 70 minutes. Oh, see, there we go. Make sure you have the valve on exhaust and not on airtight. We get to the airtight once it tells us to do so. And here is this thingy chasing its tail. It'll do so on and off. This is the most curious display, I swear. <laughs> There's more coming later. So for those who are familiar canning in the non-electric pressure canners, 
Um, this is just the heat up time now for the canner itself. And as soon as it comes to the 10 minute countdown for venting it, it'll let us know with a beep and it will show us then that it counts down. So the inside's heating up. It is starting to spit and vent now from the pressure. What is this called? The pressure valve. This will come up after pressure has been completely built up. But for now, it's just spitting stuff. Really spitting now. And the display went to E10. Let's talk about the E here in a minute. But this is the time where it vents and it'll vent now for 10 minutes. The E. My husband walked by, came to me and said, hey, this thing has an error message. <laughs> I mean, why an E, people? Why not just the time? Or why T minus 10? At least that would be kind of funny. But E10, it, the only display this has is numbers and an E for error. Every other appliance has it an error. It's just like the lid. Complete opposite. There's the steam now. Lots and lots of steam. Going all the way up. And we're still nine minutes to go. Remember when I told you that cable is short? That's why I said it's unpractical because if you don't have an outlet that's away from the cabinets, you are getting all this steam on the cabinets. And this is just the beginning. It will go like this for 70 minutes or 90 minutes, depending what charge you have in there. We have a tall ceiling in here, but all of this gets steamed up. Mm -mm -mm. Four minutes to go on the 10 minute venting time. See the uh, pressure valve is now up. This is closed and it's venting still. This is no different than from a manual, except that the steam that comes down here is not comparable in the least to my All-American. This is just blowing it out like a steam engine. We're going strong. So it has now reached the end of the 10 minute venting time. To make this error even look more like an error, it's now E0, you will not find this in the booklet, it's just on there, it could say 0, or it could say close, something like that. Here we go, we now have to turn this to the airtight, and then once it builds up, I guess it takes some more sweet time, um, then it will start the countdown. But now switch to... Chasing its tail again. It's now at 70 and the pressure is ready and all it does now is count down to the pressure and believe it or not, it will do this for the entire 70 minutes or the entire 90 minutes, whatever you have it on. Now given if it were full with four quarts, maybe it would release less, but this is what's going on. And I'll show you how much liquid is left in there when we take the lid off. 44 to go. And we're still splattering along. This is like spit and steaming. It's doing everything under the sun. 11 minutes in. Same scenario. Still huffing and puffing and spitting along. Hundred and forty on the lid. Don't touch that. See the little safety valve here is down now. It, before it went up to the um, the silver ring on top. It says off. It's time to open it. This whole thing for the 70 minutes, by the way, took two hours and 15 minutes. That's not any faster than with my manual one, even if I use the big one. So let's open it. Remember, open it away from you because it's steamy. You, and, and, and see here, I did it. I turned it to the left, but this is the other thing. There we go. You have to open it that way. And here is the other disadvantage. Yeah. 
You open it, and then there is the water catcher completely out of the way. And this will drain all the water out that has accumulated in the valve. It's not a huge deal, but it's just a flawed construction. Two cup measure. I want to know exactly how much water loss there is because I know for a fact that my All American does not lose that much water in one canning cycle. So there's two cups. Still hot. There is four cups. That is now half of what we put in. And we have this little bit left. What is that? Quarter cup? Yep, look at that. We lost three and three quarter cups in two hours into the air. This isn't working for me in Florida. So disappointing. So in summary, it works. Um, my goodness, it worked if you don't mind doing only white mouth jars or taking the risk of regular mouth. Um, I th think go for it. The price is right. Uh, especially if you're like in the high desert in Arizona or so where you don't have humidity. I think it's a good deal. Um, I'm deciding against it because I can't cook in it. I don't like this liner at all. I would have happily paid some more if this inner pot came in stainless. And I don't like that I can only use the white buff jars. And I especially don't like that it loses so much humidity into my kitchen that my air conditioner has to work triple to get that out. Um, I'd rather have the warm temperature from the big canner than actually all this humidity coming out. That just makes no sense. So I will probably go with a little stovetop presto cooker to do the leftovers from now on. Thanks for watching. Perhaps I did it wrong. There's the eight cup mark. One full canning jar is four cups. Another full canning jar. Four cups for a total of eight cups right four and four is eight but when it comes to nasco four and four is barely six the world is upside down and it does say cup it's so odd and then i don't know what the fifth are over there <laughs> so four fifth Five fifth means the top. It's a completely useless measure because you can't even do half. That would be two and a half fifth. That has no mark. <laughs> What's up with this?